I've had this little bandsaw sitting back here for ages now, and I'd really like to try to get it going. I think it'd be really handy to have. I have no idea what it's gonna take. This could be a long video, or it could be a really short one, so let's just jump in and see. Big thanks to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Surfshark is the only VPN to offer one account to use on an unlimited number of devices. Use my code to get 83% off plus one extra month for free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out for yourself. Link is in the description below. The saw had a lot of rust and cobwebs on it. It had been parked in the back of our farm shop for 10 years. It was just about to be hauled to the scrapyard when I grabbed it and put it in my barn where it sat for another five years. I thought the obvious place to start was to see if the motor worked. The cost of the project was gonna be a lot more if it didn't. A little squeaky, but I was really excited to see that it started right up. The bearings had a lot of play in them. They need to be replaced. I was missing the rubber tire on the upper wheel, so I would be replacing those too. The casting had broke where this bolt screws in. I'll have to figure that out later. Jeez. Basically, my goal was to take everything apart and get it cleaned up so I can figure out what needs to be replaced. I knew the wire brush was going to be my friend on this project. The bottom bearing sounded a little rough as well. So it was going to be new bearings all around. With the bandsaw torn apart, I started sanding down the shields to get them ready for some new paint. I tried to remove all the rust. I was kind of excited to remove all the ugly warning labels. I sanded down the frame of the bandsaw. And then did my best on the motor. Had a lot of awkward cracks and corners that were hard to get into. Probably needed a sandblasting, but I just did my best with the wire brush. Then I gave everything a couple coats of paint from the rattle can. The next day, while Kelly and Drake were planting flowers around the house, I was ready to start putting the bandsaw back together after getting a bunch of new parts in the mail. It's a little harder to get the rubber tires on than I thought it was going to be. I dropped out the old bearings and tapped in the new ones. I found a set of four bearings online that were meant just for this model of bandsaw, which was handy. The upper bearings and the lower bearings are a different size.
I bought two four-step pulleys, thinking it might be nice to be able to change the speed of the saw blade. I'm probably crazy, but I'm kind of hoping to be able to cut metal in the bandsaw as well. Which I think should be possible, if I can get the right blade and can slow it down enough. But that's to be determined. There were a bunch of rusty blades hanging on the bandsaw. They were all sharp though. I don't think any of them had been used. I threw one of them on the saw, and after a little bit of adjustment, was really happy to see it tracked well. I think the reason the bandsaw got taken out of use a while ago was because the upper and the lower guides were broken. I ordered some new ones, which was easily the biggest cost of this project, but I thought they would really improve how it cut. These new guides had bearings on both sides of the blades, and on the back side as well, which seems like a lot better design than the old style with graphite guide blocks. The lower set bolted right on, but the upper ones was going to need a little modification. It was a really loose fit. I think it must have been for a newer model that had a different size shaft. I thought maybe I could use the upper part if I put it in my farmer's lathe and took 20 thou off the points. This wasn't quite enough, so I took another 20 thou off, and it was a nice snug fit. I like that this end had flat sides on it too, so it wouldn't twist on the shaft once the set screw was tightened, like it might on the other end. I got the table bolted back on and tightened down. When I went to put the shields back on, I remember my problem with the broken casting. I just didn't think it was going to hold like this. Since the hole was deep enough for more threads, I cut the ends of the stud off and welded on a longer bolt. This kept the middle of the stud the same length, which is the area between the two shields, but the threads on one side were now longer. I riveted the serial number tag back on. And lastly, the thing I've been looking forward to doing the most, installed a new table insert. I felt pretty good about my day's work getting the saw back together, but Kelly planted over a hundred flowers around the house, so she wins the day. I really didn't want to put the bandsaw back on the flimsy stand it was originally on. I thought I'd make a new enclosed one with a door that I could store blades and other parts inside of. I also wanted to make it taller, which would make it a little more comfortable for me to use. I wouldn't be leaning over quite as much. My gramps stopped by to see what I was working on. Four sides to it. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. 
I wanted to put some leveling feet on the bottom of the legs, and I wanted the nut that they screw into to be hidden inside the leg. I welded nuts to the tab I cut, and then welded them into the bottom of the tubing. I came up with a little bit of a different design for the box that I wanted to try, where the corner legs are exposed and protrude halfway out. I wanted to keep all the welds hidden on the inside, which made for some awkward welding positions. I cut some pieces that bolt on and form a lip for the door to sit against. I cut these in four pieces, so I wouldn't waste as much metal. And the door is just the cutout. I clamped the door to the lip, checked to make sure I had an even offset around the door, and welded it on some hinges. I drew up a couple latches for the door and cut them out. They needed a slight bend in my farmer's press brake, and then I bolted them on. I really liked how the latches turned out. I posted a picture of the latches on Instagram, and someone commented I should have used carriage bolts like I did on the perimeter of the door. And they were absolutely right. Next time. The last thing to cut on the CNC table was a top. I had to scab two pieces together to get a piece wide enough with what I had in hand. Bandsaw, meet stand. Stand, meet bandsaw. I think your two are going to get along great. You were made for each other. I got everything set in place so I could figure out where the motor needed to be mounted. I was originally thinking I would just cut a new motor mounting plate, but I realized the original would actually work well if I cleaned it up and made a few modifications.
I set it on the belt so I could mark the height and then welded it in place. I removed the power switch and cut a hole for it in the new stand. Handheld plasma cutting. Yuck. I mean, what century are we in? I cut up and used a heavy extension cord to replace all the old wiring and plug. For the last time, the bandsaw was moved back onto the stand. I got it centered and welded it from the inside. And I think it's that time. Time to turn this thing on for the first time. I was a little nervous. <laughs> I felt like I should protect my eyes and protect my crotch for some reason. But it ran great. The blade tracked perfect on the wheels. I kept expecting it to walk off, but it stayed nice and centered. I don't know if I've ever actually used a bandsaw before, which is kind of weird. Well, I mean a vertical one, like this at least. I loved how it cut. It cut through this plywood like nothing. It seemed like it was going to be really easy to follow a line with it as well. The last thing I told myself I had to do, even though it was kind of an eyesore, was build a shield over the belts. It would be good for keeping the sawdust out of the inside of the cabinet too. I wiped everything down with some metal degreaser and gave it some clear coat to keep it from rusting. I wanted to keep it the bare metal look. I know this bandsaw is a long ways off from the big professional ones you see the pros using in their shops. And it's definitely going to have its limits. But I think it's going to be a really useful tool for me to have for making small, odd cuts. And it's going to be really convenient that it's always set up, plugged in, and ready to cut. I can just walk up to it and go. Unlike a jigsaw or other tool that I got to dig out of the back of the tool cabinet and get it plugged in. It took some work, and I think I spent a couple hundred bucks uh, on new parts for it. But I'm really glad this tool is in my barn, and not at the scrapyard. I switched the bandsaw over to a narrower blade, and started testing what I could cut out. The bandsaw is going to be a great tool to have in the shop. Once again, a big thanks to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. A VPN, or a Virtual Private Network, is a privacy protection tool which guarantees instant online safety. Surfshark encrypts all the data sent via the internet so that no one can see your passwords, private messages, steal photos, videos, sensitive data, or know what you're doing online. You can also change the country you're accessing the internet from to access and unblock content. I was really surprised that quite a few of my streaming services aren't available when I'm traveling to Ireland with Kelly every year, and so I use Surfshark VPN to reroute my internet access through America to access all of my regularly available content. I also use Surfshark when I'm on public Wi-Fi, like when I'm working remotely at coffee shops in town. Use my code to get 83% off plus one month extra for free. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out for yourself. Link is in the description below. Thanks Surfshark for your support and for giving me a good test project on the new bandsaw. New to me bandsaw, I mean.